So the first 40 of this final day of the combine is off and running. Big Isaiah Adams, if you're looking for the actual 40 number, you know, again, it's not as important as the 10, but the 40 number for interior linemen, the average of the top 10 guys as, as we have it here was 496. Uh, for the tackles, very similar, 495. Is this the man who might protect Justin Herbert for his professional playing career? This is a possible top five selection here from Notre Dame. Look at the size of Joe Alt. Just a hair shy of six foot nine on the 40 yard dash line. There he goes. Five That's a great seven. time. Look at the split. And of course, the fans here in Indiana giving him a nice round of applause. It's tough to find comps when you got guys this big, yeah. but I thought this one was interesting. Okay. Colton Miller, who's developed into a really good player as a blindside protector there for the Raiders. You see the similarity in the height. Uh, the weight, Colton Miller, he's cut down weight to run that year, so he plays more in that 320 range. Uh, you see the 40 just a little bit better, the 10 just a little bit better. But uh, Joe Alt's going to go much higher in the draft, but that's a, a body type similarity there. Here's Gottlieb Ayedze of Maryland. It's a right tackle for the Terps. There's teams thought you know he would move inside when you when you study him. A Sunday hello to Chris Rose, Charles Davis, and Peter Schrager up on the concourse, gents. Happy Sunday, Rich Eisen. What are we hearing about the big boys, Peter Schrager? I love what DJ said to start this. I talked to a general manager yesterday. I said, this is the best offensive line class I can remember since I've been doing this. So we're talking about talent out there. They all seem to be competing in the most part. And then you've got your two guys, Fuaga and Alt, who everyone's like, those guys might be top 15, top 10, top 5. But I'm here for the workouts, and I think Tyler Guyton might put on a show. Oklahoma mm -hmm. via TCU just did his broad jump earlier and then also did his vertical jump, 34 and a half inches. He's going to run. I think he might put on a show as far as the big men go. You're a good scout, let me Try tell it. you, because you understand it well. This is a guy who was a former tight end, so it doesn't surprise anyone that the athleticism will come with it. Let's talk about a couple of other guys that maybe people won't see on the top end, but they're going to be really good pros. Cooper Beebe, the guard out of Kansas State. You talk to anyone that plays against him, you're in for an all-day affair when you deal with Cooper Beebe, and Kansas State turns out offensive linemen. How about Garrett Greenfield from South Dakota State? Already has put on a show, mm -hmm. right? Did he not break a record with a vertical did. jump for offensive linemen? Wait till you see his footwork and his speed. It will translate. He's going to be a smooth operator out there today. And last but not least, it's not how you get the job done. It's getting the job done, and that's Christian Haynes from UConn. It's going to be really awkward when you see him at, when you see him play football, and if you're going to fight with him, you better pack a lunch and dinner. But he does get the job done. You mentioned Greenfield, by the way. He jumped 38 and a half in the vert. This is a guy that's uh, 6'5 and a half, 3'11. That is a record for an offensive lineman since 2003. So the athleticism already shining, Rich Eisen. Thank you, gents. Keaton Bills, Utah. That was a great time by Cooper Beebe just a second ago. Here's Bills, 36 starts at left guard. He's got some power and some torque. It's more power than athleticism. That's more his game. Has anyone ever been drafted by a team that matches the last name of the prospect? That's something the Jack's going to have to get the work on over at? there. I'm, I've never met a Seahawk. Well, I'm just, I've, yeah. Have you ever seen a Bills? I think that's the name that's probably going to give you your best shot there. Ever? Yeah. You know, there's Bordellini. Wisconsin Badger. Really smart cerebral center. Looks like we have our first sub four five. I mean, five, sub five forty today. Stacy. Yeah, Rich and DJ, uh, Joe Alt is super interesting. He was actually originally a tight end. 
and obviously at the O-line position that has helped tremendously with his agility, but he said his body, we spent some time with it this week, his body was growing so rapidly, he started doing O-line drills while he was still that tight end, and his dad was a tight end, of course, in college. He told him to switch, so he made the switch, but he's just incredibly athletic. At 6'8", he was a hockey player uh, in the second grade, but guys, he got too big for the skates. <laughs> Very good. Andrew Coker, TCU. Transfer from Alabama. Oh, no, sorry, Coker. There you go, 5'3'9", left tackle. I love how everybody's out there listening in your world, DJ. You get texts every now and then. Yeah. Somebody's chimed in from your world that there was a, a Cleveland Brown once upon a time named Brown, who's <laughs> only one of the greatest players in the history of North American sports. Yeah, that's pretty bad but whiff by us up no, here no, no, on no, that no, one. No, 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 Except it's, his last name wasn't Brown's. Okay, so technically, on this a technicality, yeah. Bills. With an S. Right? Plural. Brandon Coleman. Another horn frog up here now. Almost 35 inch arms, long arms. He can create a lot of movement in the run game. He'll, he'll get beat at times, but he just stays attached and able to get just enough. He's an interesting player. I, I put him kind of in that third round range. He's got a chance, he's got a chance to uh, stay at tackle or kick inside. Nice That's run. A great time. He's Doug Peterson checking out the interior linemen and tackles that are here today. Ian Rappaport. Always a fun game, Rich, of trying to figure out which country club or golf club is on the hat of some of these head coaches. I got a lot of questions for Doug Peterson there. Anyway, let's get through some of these big-time offensive linemen. Schrager mentioned it. This is an excellent class. I think more maybe than we've ever had in the combine and really, really high quality. Let's take a look at where some of the big-time guys have been spending their time this week. First of all, Joe Alt, who is so tall. Can't believe how tall he is. Joe Alt spent some time this week doing official visits with the Jets, Titans, and charges, obviously charges at five would make a lot of sense. The potential blindside protector for Justin Herbert. Oregon State tackle Tali Fuanga, guest of the insiders from Mobile. Good dude. He spent time with the Chargers, Raiders, and Rams. What you're kind of getting here is a landscape of who is going to do all the homework on the big-time offensive linemen. What about Bama offensive tackle J.C. Latham? He met with the Jets and described it as a dream about possibly blocking for Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, rebuilding the Jets offensive line is a big t uh, topic this offseason for New York. Thank you, sir. And here's Olu Fashionu, 5-1-1 for the Penn State Nittany Lion. He is 12th on Daniel Jeremiah's top 50 list. How about his high school team with him and Caleb Williams? I imagine they probably didn't lose a lot of ball games. <sighs> No doubt about it. And now here is number 17 this on is, your top 50 list. He's Boy. one of my favorites to watch, too. Fautanu. He is twitched up. When you watch him, he can roll his hips, and he is nasty. So he's running, running pretty well here. Rolling downhill. Big men running. You missed while we're in break. Blake Fisher, teammate of Joe Alt. A right tackle and wonder he might kick inside the guard, similar to Aaron Banks, other former Notre Dame offensive lineman. Jeremy Flax. Right tackle, Kentucky. That's a big man there. 343 pounds. That's uh guy that Warren Sapp might refer to as my pace coach. <laughs> Javon Foster. 5-3 flat. Oh, and now, let's get to number 10 on your top 50. He is he is so good. And it's, everything he does is so clean, Rich. He just doesn't get beat, and he is nasty. Talisa Fuaga of Oregon State. A lot of mock drafts have him going to the Jets at 10. This Gadlin. Gadlin is eight. Xavier Gadlin right there. Now here's Nick Gargiulo, South Carolina. 
he cut his hair because he had the he had the long hair going he did. and sweet stash. Took the flow right off. Yeah. It's a choice. <laughs> he started 36 games. He's played center. He's played left guard. He's played left tackle. The Yale transfer. Julo, 5-2-6. Stacy. Rich, I heard DJ talk glowingly of Washington's Troy Fautanu, and uh, we spent some time with him this week. He obviously, you know, they're all going to tell us this, but he thinks he's the most versatile lineman in this draft. But what's really cool about him, he was a really good volleyball player, you guys. He was so good that, I mean, he would crush the ball, obviously, but he <laughs> joked with us. He said, it's a lot easier to jump when I was 60 pounds lighter. But <laughs> but the agility, those jumps, all that footwork, the lateral movement really translates to the league or the football in the league. Here is Delmar Glaze, Maryland Terrapin, also the name of Mariucci's famous fa uh, favorite donut shop when he lived in Southern California. The Glaze? Delmar Glaze. Oh, Delmar. Oh, Delmar. Nice. Thank you very much. Nice. Nice. It's late. It's late in the week. I know. This year, Del Mar, I think, at the racetrack, it wasn't uh, wasn't tracking. There's Grable. Central Florida is Tylen Grable. He's almost six foot six, 311 pounds, started 27 games. Thought he played under control. Uh, there's some times where you'll see guys get into him and you, you worry about anchor a little bit. Well, uh, See how he bends and moves around in the, in the field workout as we get along here. Began his career at Jacksonville State. Winding up at Central Florida. Great time. 499. Here comes Garrett Greenfield of South Dakota State. And he had the best vertical leap of any lineman in the last 20 combines. 38 and a half vert. He's a sixth year player too. He started 55 games. CD, you're a uh, you're a Garrett Greenfield fan. And he gets whistled. Did I lose Charles? No, no, no. Nope, not there at all, guys. I, I'm excited about this guy as we take a look up there. That's the Cowboys Brain Trust and Stephen Jones checking things out. But Greenfield, we already heard about him breaking the record for vertical jump, right? Yep. DJ, you always talk about how these things translate. Cannot wait to watch the 40. I'm really eager to watch him in the in the field work because I think he's a smooth, a smooth mover. I think he really does well, especially in pass pro. We see, uh, again, a lot of sixth-year guys in this draft class, so older, more mature, and have played a lot of ball. He kind of popped up there. If he drives out a little bit more, he can get that time down. Here's Tyler Guyton. Oklahoma. In case you're wondering, we we're almost through alphabetically the G's of this group, and it's O lineman number 31. Yeah, there's a lot there's of them. 65 of them. Here. It's a big group. This is going to be this is going to be a good time here with Guyton, former tight end, as the guys were talking about on the other set. Good athlete. I thought he'd run a little bit faster than that. The 10's good. CJ Hansen. Holy Cross. Can I give Stacy some homework? Sure. Give Stacy some homework real quick, then we'll get over to Peter. But Stacy, hopefully, you can find out what happened with Fashionu. I don't know if we're going to see him run again. I think he might have pulled up going through his 40. But Peter? Tyler Guyton, I, I'm surprised. I thought he'd be sub five. Heard a lot this week about how he is the most athletic of this class and maybe the most versatile. He played H back a little bit, tight end, like he said. Uh, surprised at that number. We'll see if he can improve that on the second time around. Five flat for Hansen. We watched Christian Haynes of UConn 
move it. Uh, he can play any of those three interior spots. That's a good run. 5.03. There's a lot of uh, stopwatch sharing in the scout line. I watched after that 40. Christian Jones. Oh, good nicely time. done. Good time. Right just, tackle. Just a little Texas. off little off from Xavier Worthy. Just a little bit. <laughs> but aren't, aren't we all? Matthew Jones from Ohio State. 5-2-1. And now, Trent Jones, one of six Michigan Wolverines in the offensive line group. 18 Wolverines here, a third of them in the offensive line group. And here's another, Trevor Keegan. Left guard, <laughs> Michigan. Left tackle, Michigan. To my right, as we watch Isaiah Adams go through his second 40. He'll stick with the first. And moments ago, oh no, we're going to go live. There we go, Joe Alt. Again, a lot of folks have this guy in mock drafts going to the Chargers. Rashawn Slater already has a lock, a Pro Bowl <laughs> lock. An all-pro all pro yeah. lock on that left tackle position. So this would be the bookend, I mean, quite a bookend, to say the least. 505, so he slightly improves and gets a, a warm ovation from the Golden Domers who are here in the crowd. <laughs> this segment and this group this day at the Combine is officially for the boys. Good to see you. Good to see you Taylor as well. Taylor Lewan. How are we doing, point? gentlemen? Good to see you, man. We were talking before the commercial break. Someone's missing on a turkey sandwich. All it's the coming. producers it's coming. in there. It's coming. No, 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 yeah, my listen. man is turkey sandwich. <laughs> it's all good. We're, we're marathoning. We're yeah. not sprinting. It's I all good. It. Day four. Oh. Seemed like the energy's a little bit low today. <laughs> it seems like the people aren't really feeling it. They put all the big guys at the end. I suggest putting them back in the beginning. Okay. Let these big hefties run their five flats with a lot of energy in the building. Meaning just the first, they just come out of the gate with it. Yeah, coming saying. out of the gate. I'm pretty sure that's how they used to do it yeah. back in 2014. And also bring back, they should not give these offensive linemen any option other than tightly fitted outfits. You got to work with what you got, baby. Can't be wearing this loose fit stuff. Like what we're seeing right now, is that yeah. what you're saying? See, I feel like he pulled up a little bit. Could have dipped under five okay. if he finished that one off yeah. there. That's not going to bode well with the scouts. <laughs> you got to be able to finish through the line, brother. OL 23 in 2014, that's what you were? Yes, sir. They, uh, Do you have the nerves? Did you have nerves on that day? God, are you kidding me? The, when I was so, they broke it up into two groups, which they still do now, and it went OL 1 to OL 22 in the first group. So I was the first guy going in the second group, and I thought, I got 22 guys to watch first. Sure enough, have to go. The 40 was like the first thing you do. And I knew I was going to run well, but I was hoping, like, please, just, I wanted to have the best time. And at that time, it was uh, me, Jake Matthews, and Greg Robinson. So I take my time. I start at the back of that 40-yard dash mm -hmm. billboard sign. I take my slow Beyonce walk, as they call, a <laughs> couple of deep breaths, <laughs> and then just ran like the absolute wind. It was a time. It really was. And as soon as I got the 40 in, I saw that it was under five. I thought, anything after this, nothing matters. I didn't think I'd take anything else serious after it. Four, I was eight, just seven. Happy. You had a four, yeah, eight, seven. Flying. Yeah, the, we were moving. The One. two things I remember about you that year, A, was the time mm -hmm. and how fast you were, and B, was the tan. Yes. Golly, you were tan that I day. know. What, what was the key there again? You so told me this in the past. Hours but. and hours at a tanning booth. Is fake the, bake? You fake oh, bake yes, for the combine? Absolutely. Come on. <laughs> There's no question. Listen, we all know. Look at that. Look, Look at, at that. that. You kidding me right yes. now? Yes. You see this pale, pasty white man sitting here at the same time <laughs> 10 years ago. It's nothing different. Listen, me and the boys, Zach, Martin, and a couple other guys, oh. we were down in Bradenton, Florida. We decided to jump over to a tanning booth. Had a great time doing it. Burnt like hell. I thought I was going to crisp up like nobody's business. But we get here, and I felt like it works out, dude. The more tan you are, tan, tatted, or toned, those are the three ways to look good. Yeah. And I didn't have that third one, so I thought I'd do the first two. Mm. It's a bit of a deal, man. Anything you can to wow some scouts. Does that make you look faster? Is that what it is? You tell me. I mean, that 487, That's there's right. no way Rolling. that was real. 171 on the split. Damn. Yeah, I believe it was a, a 164 on official, but, you know, who's counting, Rich? Who's counting? Is that is that a true fact that you just told me? You can look that up, if, yeah. Well, no, I just looked up. The fastest 40 of anyone 6'7 or taller since we've started covering the company. Oh, for How real? About that? Yeah. I did you. not know that. Yeah. It's a party a, of one. That's yeah. a stat for the boys right there. It's lonely at the top, boys. <laughs> That was Wisconsin guy. There you go. Nice. Good there time. Go. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. He's he a loves juice it. kick. He loves it. 
Got the mullet dangling in the back. Look at him go. Victory Look at him lap. Going. Victory lap. You go on, Bordellini. You go. No, go. Keep going. Oh, he's pointing. There I, he goes. I love it. So they can see it. Oh, it shows up here. Oh, huh? yeah. I feel like if if uh, <laughs> yesterday was the IndyCar races, today's the truck series. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good go. Look at that. Party in the front, uh, in the back, huh? Relaxed, All relaxed business up face. front. Look at that. <laughs> like a track star. That's awesome. The uh, These guys, I hate to be the dude that's like, well, back in my day, but when we were running the 40s, we didn't get to see the times. There wasn't this broadcast going no. up in the corner. And there'd be guys on their phones. And I remember uh, Greg Robinson, he came up to me. He ran like, fast here. He ran yeah. fast. Unofficially, he was actually faster than me. Yeah. So I was kind of salty, but he came over and said, hey, bro, 4 8, whatever. Yeah. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Let's go. <laughs> so we're all like, we were banding together in the corner over there, man. It's it's a good deal. That's what, but I, 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 I really dig it. I'm glad that, that this is the setup because that helped with last night where Xavier Worthy crossed the line, saw 4-2-2, went nuts. 16,000 fans here saw it at the same time, too. Yeah. It led to a memorable moment. Oh, Frank wow, Brum. There we go. Yeah, good flow. More flow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fist pump and a point. <laughs> Just the boys one up at each other around here. I love it. I don't think he went to the tanning bed, though. No. Uh, you see that body. There's no way that's tanning. That just that just burns. <laughs> Look bitch. at the hair. Yeah. That is awesome. Giving it hell the whole time. That is outstanding. Are they say to relax the face when you're running. He did not take that advice. Six. He's six eight and changed. Three hundred and thirteen pounds too. That's a big dude. Wow, Tanu, and uh, I believe we're about to get the news you were searching for. DJ. Take it away, Stacey. Yes, DJ is uh, rich. Penn State's Olu Fashionu. I just spoke with him. He's out for the day, unfortunately. Ah. He's got a right thigh injury, he told me. Obviously, you see him. He's uh, icing it currently. He told me that he should be okay by Penn State's pro day, which I believe he told me is March the 15th. We will double check that. But Guys, he is ultra competitive. He's in good spirits, but obviously disappointing. Uh, one of the top guys in this draft, he will be. Well, I, I think that first time, Stacy was like a 5-1-1 we had. It. He, you could see him. He kind of pulled as he was mm -hmm. going through it. March 15th is, in fact, the pro day for Penn State. So there you go. He is icing and unfortunately done for the day, but does not appear to be in poor spirits. You know, from my understanding about this Olu kid, is he was a one-year starter, decided to come back. He could have been a top-10 pick last, last year. Last year he would have been, yeah. And for that to happen in this situation, he's still going to make himself a lot of money and make one franchise very happy for the next 10 years. Who knows? Could be the Tennessee Titans. Put him next to Peter Skoronsky. Mm -hmm. Let those boys go to battle for 10 years. You yeah, they've got to keep adding pieces to that Titans yeah. offensive line. Yeah, that was, a, that was a sore subject in the year of 2023 for those boys in Nashville, Tennessee. But they will be all right. That's what I'm talking about with the baggy shirt. You can't be having that. Get going, Jeremy. <laughs> all right. All right. We shaved some off. Phone booth guy. Oh, yeah, he's a big man. Of Oregon State. Did he better his 5-2 flat? He did. Nice. He's one of the easier guys to evaluate in this whole class. Just doesn't have negative, any negative tape. Sevilla so Gadlin. 48 starts for him. He runs a 5 5 one That's what he is. Okay. All right, let's pull up those pants. Nick Gargiulo, South Carolina. His first 40 is a 5 2 6. Let's see if we've got a. Another one's going to be 24 as a rookie. What, did he go on a mission before? Why is he so old? No, we got a bunch of 60-year guys because of the COVID Oh, year. that's right. He runs a 5-2-6. Yeah, we've got guys that have started 57 games in this no draft. Way. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bo Nix started 61 games. Yeah, Bo Nix, he's in his uh, early 30s now. How old is he? I, th I think he'll be 20. I think he's another one will be 24. He can throw the ball, though. He can really get it done. Delmar Glaze, Maryland. It just feels right when we've got an offensive line group with a crumb and a glaze. Nice. <laughs> Absolutely. So many ways to go about those two words. 
Stumbled a little bit getting out. Tried to stay low. There we go. I'll Not stick with this good. first. He's one that we got a bunch of, a handful at least in this group. I think you'll see tackle to guard move. Bordelini and Crumb sounds like like a like one of those shows, right? A crime fighting duo. Yeah. You know they got they got mullets and they got a nose for trying to solve a case, right? Doesn't that sound like? Yeah, it? but it's always a taste that gets them to the like the end result yeah. of that crime. Mm -hmm. Hey Crumb, get over here. Let me taste this for a second. <laughs> Boom. You know what that is? I do. Bordelini and Crumb. They are your current unofficial leaders of the offensive line group. And they both run the same 40? Yeah. It, it's a duel between the two of them to yeah. see who takes home the prize. Tylen Grable. Nice. All right, Tylen. Nice round of applause. Look at that. For Don't you wish you got that when yeah, you finished no yours? No question. You know me, center of attention guy. I would have loved that. Tylen, when he was running, too, is you heard his feet. Oh, you didn't hear his feet, which is even better. Ran very smooth. Light. Some of these guys you have out there, some of the ground pounders. The concrete. Yeah. Yes. Well done. I think you would have given us a little Hulk Hogan hand to ear Maybe after, a little something. after yeah. your 40. I would have, you know, I would have definitely showboated a little bit more. I probably would have <laughs> ran faster. There's more people in the building. See, there's another one here. 55 starts, Taylor. Yeah. 24 inch chain. Not a great move if you want to run fast. <laughs> Could break a tooth here, brother. Let's see what you got, Garrett. He jumped 38. Inches. He broke the vertical record for offensive linemen. That's with a pound of silver on his neck, too. Oh. A better time. Good for him. It seems like the gold standard around here is 5'1", 5'1", 6". It seems like the average we've been dealing with at this 2024 combine. Again, for tackles, the number that you're shooting for is for the for the top tier guys is 4'9", four, 5". Four, with the interior guys, it's really 4'9", 6". No difference, really. Mm -hmm. Here's Tyler Guyton. I thought he would run a little bit better than that. Let's see if he's got a faster time here. Rich, you've been a little quiet on this broadcast. Are you still nervous because it's been over 600 days since you've been on Bustin' with the boys? Uh, Ooh. Not at all, first of all. <laughs> first of all. Secondly, I'm a good host, so I defer to the guests. You know, you're here. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That's second. And third, you know... Hold on a second. Hold on a second. That's C.J. Hansen's coach. That's there he is. Bob Chesney. Got the boomer horizontal phone. He's got it working. Put that thing vertical, brother. I don't know if he knows it's for the IG. It's not for the gram, I guess. No, that's for his own personal vault. But you know <laughs> I wanted to come on the show, and I was ready to come to Nashville, but you had you had training camp. You said, yeah. I can't do it. That's when I was the date was man. picked. Yeah. Two summers ago. Yeah. The date you you brought to me when I, it was like July, like, hey, could you do August 7th? And I said, no, it's an off day, but I still have camp. And I had to focus on my craft and try to bring a Lombardi <laughs> trophy home to the Tennessee Titans fan base. But I just do it to prove that it, it I, I, I was ready to do it. No, I, I think w way longer than 600 whatever days it is currently right now. I think it's at the point where you probably shouldn't ever come on. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Just be like no. 10,000 oh days God. in. No, the, the he looks like he's rolling by yeah. 507. Christian Jones. Run. We're going to get Jack his uh, his wheels. 30, 40 years. Go to your funeral. <laughs> give a nice speech. Richard's a good man. He never kept all of his promises, but he kept most of his promises. So yeah. instead of putting him in the ground, you're going to put him in the bus? Yeah. I'd like to. Wouldn't that be lovely? I'd like to. Matthew Jones. Never beat the University of Michigan, but still you. got the invite to the combine. Look at you. Probably going to be an absolute stud. Just kidding, Ohio State fans. We're having a good time here. <laughs> Don't be afraid to laugh. Five, two, one. Got to improve on that time. Gets out of the start. A little high as he comes out of the 10, but he's finishing strong, digging deep, and doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. That is the definition of insanity. Unfortunately, Matthew Jones you, is in that parallel. You just right want him to wear the tighter shirt. That was where <laughs> you were hung I up do. on. All right, here's a Wolverine wearing the yeah. tight skivvies here. So we have a strength coach like her, man. You're not afraid to show what you got. And listen, we all know off to linemen, bad body ballers, even his... Picking tribal tattoos, not the best. I had that. 
How much are you down, time. by the way, right now? In life? No, from your weight. <laughs> oh. Um. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm just looking to see how much weight wow, you Wow, we were lost. digging deep. We were uh, digging it's funny deep. you bring that up, Dave. No, it's something I need to talk about. I need a job. Uh, I'm, down, I'm down 60 pounds right now. Oh, my gosh. 60 of them. And uh, it was, oh, I would stop now. Kind of a short stepper there. Yeah. But Five it ones. Improved he improved it. I thought he. Stacy. Rich, you guys are going to love this. Frank Crum, I just talked to him. He had the 494, stoked about it. But the first thing he told me, he's like, is the lettuce getting some action? Nice. That's, that would be his hair. Some oh, people yeah. call it the lettuce. Wow. The lettuce is getting some action. He is pumped. And as for who takes care of it, his fiance, Caitlin Brown, she gives him this goop, keeps it nice and curly. And here's the backstory on his hair. He actually had a mullet like four years ago, he said. He shaved it bald. So mm -hmm. State, he's a sixth year player. He's played a lot of football. Played in 49 games. There's the split. And there's the 40. Solid. Stacy Dales. Rich, I have Wyoming's finest with me. This is the man who is trending on social, Frank Crum. I mean, what a day, Frank. Look at look at me. I know. Come on. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, no, it's very privileged to be here. And thanks to the guys at Exos uh, for getting us ready this past eight yeah. weeks. Um, we knew we could run sub five, and uh, I was thankful to be able to do that today. Yeah, unofficial 494. You were flying, and so was the lettuce. Thank the you. lettuce is getting the love. Yes, exactly right. I've been growing this mullet out for a couple years, and I'm glad I kept it, that's for sure. I thought you cut it, though, like four years ago, and then you, this has been like a two-year process. Really? Yeah, I had it probably this long, four years ago. Did a restart. Mm -hmm. um, Decided I missed it, and I've kept it ever since. So you got engaged to your sweetheart, Caitlin Brown, and she takes care of it. Now, can you can you give us, like, people are going to want to know how they can handle their hair, like, get what you have. Yeah, I'd hit her, her up on social media because I have no idea what she puts in my hair. She goes to the <laughs> salon and comes back with the goodies, and it looks like this. Yeah, there's Wyoming Cowboy football. The flow is flowing. They tagged you uh, with big man speed. How proud are you? I mean, your dad was a football player at Wyoming. Your grandpa Earl, dad Brad, right? Gary. Gary, excuse yes. me, my my bad. No. Gary and Earl. Yes. How? What's it like to represent the state of Wyoming? Yeah, to carry on a three generation legacy means the world to me. It was a no brainer uh, going to Wyoming out of high school and to play for my hometown and my home state, and then uh, to hopefully continue playing football past college and still represent the state of Wyoming. That means the world to me. Yeah. And he got engaged, folks, in the snow, which is really cool. I think we have a shot of it. Nice. L look at that. Yeah, there it is. We set that up, and Miss Caitlin was surprised. And she's from Atlanta, Georgia, so uh, thank God she had a jacket on that day. <laughs> she doesn't have many of those. So, uh, you know, the snow was essential because that's where we met was up there in the in the West. Well, the personality, Frank Crum, is phenomenal. Rich, as I throw it back to you, he played both right and left tackle, though this last season at Wyoming, left tackle. We're, we'll see because he'll be an imposing force on an offensive line this season. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Frank. Right. Back to you, Rich. That's right. By the way, just to show you how big, tall Frank is, I mean, Stacey Dill is the third overall pick of the 2002 <laughs> WNBA draft. Yeah. You know, and, and look at that right there. Yep. I know. Yep. Bring it in. There you go. I mean, my goodness. That's a big dude. Hey, Caitlin. That's a big, yes, right. Big shout out. You want to send right. her a message? Okay, there you go. Yep. Love nice. you, Mom. Love you, little brother, Evan. There you go. That's great. That's, huh? Yeah. Enjoy Thanks, it. Sir. Yeah. There you go. By the way, speaking of Caitlin, uh, Caitlin Clark passed Pistol Pete for the all time leading scorer in the history of college she's basketball fun to watch. today. She's coming. Looks like she's coming here, speaking of WNBA. They have the first pick. <laughs> Yeah, Folks that's here in Indianapolis. That's are psyched that when she announced that she's going to go pro. So that's awesome. It sure is. KT Leviston right there from Kansas State. Yeah, he's a left tackle. Here's Bo Limmer, another Arkansas Razorback. During that interview, we saw Brady Latham run his 40. There's Limmers. See the 175 split. Again, the uh, the number you're keeping an eye on on the 10 here that you're aiming for is 176. So he's right there. We just did the he just did the top gun 
high five and then catch him on the way down right nice. there. That was nicely done. I was to feel the need for speed. Maybe that's why they did that. Nicely then. done. What a great name. Christian Mahogany from Boston College. It's a great oh, 10 oh, split. Yeah. He just said, oh, yeah, again. It uh, looks like that's what the BC guys uh, like to do and the Florida State guys like to do. Shane Steichen, there's the coach of the Colts. McCormick should test well here. Wow, Charles, he goes two at a time. There you go. <laughs> Mason McCormick. A lot of jackrabbits in the building. I know. They had a good program. Not referring to Charles going up the steps. <laughs> He's 57 starts here. Six year player. He's outstanding on combo blocks. He's very athletic. That program has taken over the North Dakota State spot as the dominant program in 1AA. No doubt. South Dakota State, is that um, Vinatieri? It's also Goddard. Oh, yeah, Dallas Goddard. You're right on that. That Vinatieri. story that story McAfee told about I know. holding for Vinatieri, lying to a man who's here in the ring of honor, <laughs> Bill Polian. <laughs> oh yeah, I held, sure. I didn't never held. But I think Pat did himself very well here. In Indianapolis. There's Dylan McMahon of NC State. Looks like Ozzy's having a little lunch. Middle of the day here. Ozzy's yeah. been doing this a long time. Remember, I had to make some sandwich runs when I first got into the For league him? back in the day. Oh yeah. What does he like? Um, it was uh, a lot of different orders back then. Okay. I came back. It was uh, I had a sore back uh, bringing those things back into the RCA dome back in the day. That's called paying dues. <laughs> Now they bring sandwiches to you, sir. I, yeah. Listen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sean O'Hara, take it away. Hey, Rich, DJ, well, I'm, I don't see the numbers down here on Dylan McMahon, but just watching film on him, man, he is an athletic center. So I, I think he's going to put on a, a great show here on these drills. What, what do you got there for a 10 split? Yeah, 5 1 uh, was the 40. What's the 10 split on him? I mean, he looked quick. He had to, he had to come back. One and seven do it a seven. Time. One yep. seven seven. Yeah, he's man. He is athletic. He's got he, great hands. He's great outst movement. outstanding on combo blocks. When I was going back through my notes here, Sean. This is a large man here. Oh my gosh. Amarius Sim Mims, pardon me, of Georgia. Let's see him run. Look at him go. He, he looks like an Avenger. Good lord. Five oh seven. What a terrific run. That looked terrific. Yeah. I mean. Look at, I mean, hey, Sean, that's that's a dense body right there that's weighing 340 pounds. Here's the comp. You go back. How about coming out of Auburn back in 06, Marcus McNeil? Wow, look at that. You went deep. Like a that's DNA a deep, match. That's a deep cut. Yes. And if he had some health, I want to say it was his back, but he had some health issues, but he was a really good player while he was out there. I think we need, need to just linger for a second. Six, seven and three quarters, 340 pounds, almost ran a sub 540. And that's insane. And that wasn't like a, I just ate two pizzas. No. Like he's chiseled. I mean, that is a, that's impressive. Wow. Jacob Monk of Duke is running. Nice split. Nice 40, Stacy. Yeah, he is chiseled. It's it's remarkable to stand beside Amarius Mims and his biggest goal. You mentioned the health stuff. It was the high ankle sprain right early this yeah. past college season, and it uh, you know something he had to have tightrope surgery for. His biggest goal here today. He wanted to show everybody, DJ and Rich, that he is a hundred percent healthy, no issues from a health standpoint, and also just that he can move as well as anybody out here. It is remarkable, guys, whether you're watching him on the vertical, you're watching him on the broad jump, and then you talk to him, and he just lights up a room. I mean, he, he just will pop. Whichever team gets this guy, I think they're going to be really happy. Nice run by Jordan Morgan right there from Arizona. Another tackle. He's in the mix in the first round range. The 
fifth and final active Michigan Wolverine to be running today. He's the man in the middle, center. They say it makes that whole front go. Again, Zach Zinter, one of the leaders of that team, is here but not working out. Was hovering from that leg surgery. Patrick Hall of That's Houston. Good time when you're six, seven and a half, 331 pounds with 36 and change inch arms. Wow. Prince Pines, great name out of Tulane. Look at him go. Nice. What are the green fees there? <laughs> That's a good one. Dominic Pooney. Oh, he's a favorite of mine. I like Pooney. He's striding it out. He is uh, got the long stride working there. He's going to play guard. He played left tackle at Kansas, but he's going to be an interior lineman at the next level. Okay. Here's Rame. Andrew Rame of Oklahoma. 4-2. Roger Rosengarten of Washington. He saw his teammate earlier in Fautanu. And a 4-9-2. We have a new best time at the combine for an offensive lineman. It might not last long. Okay. Because you're, he, this dude can roll. It's Kingsley Suamata Ia. Stepping up here. Just a hair shy of six foot five. He's very, he's very athletic, kind of springy and bouncy for an offensive lineman. Began his career at Oregon. He is really quick getting out in space. And he's quick getting out there, 174. Yeah, he's moving. And a 5.06 for wow. Sua Mataia. Good time, but Rosengarten has the lead, in the lead here. Stacy. You guys know the great Penne Sewell is his cousin. Hmm. I mean, that is his mentor, the all pro with the Detroit Lions and uh, gives him a ton of tips. Obviously, why wouldn't you? But uh, he's ambidextrous. I thought that was pretty interesting. He actually writes with both hands and has his entire life rich in DJ. And I share that just because he plays both sides of the line, right? Left tackle and right tackle. We'll see where he fits best at the next level. But I actually had him go up to a riser on his riser and write his name down with both hands. And it looked pretty much the same. And he said when he was in class, he was able to take double the notes, uh, double the knowledge, if you will. And a really interesting guy uh, was a boxer also growing up. Uh, his granddad, he told me, was a Golden Gloves type boxer. So, uh, you know, just a lot of athleticism and sort of some maybe some untapped potential, DJ, that mm -hmm. teams are going to love to work with. Well, if you've seen my penmanship, I suck with one. I can't imagine what I look like trying to write with my other nice. one. Nice. We thought Dallin Holker was the only ambidextrous one at the combine. <laughs> I still can't get over that that drill. Oh, the double catch. Yeah, yes. the double catch. Good pull. Good pull. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the gauntlet. The gauntlet, one of the all-time great gauntlet That feels moments. like it was three weeks ago. Oh, oh my, my gosh. That is unbelievable. And you could, I'm glad there's other people in there so you could see it's not one of those reversed yeah, yeah. videos to make it look like he's that, jumping out when he was really jumping in. That was not a reef step either. That my was... Uh, goodness, the athleticism and the size of these guys. Cedric Van Pran Granger of Georgia. Yeah, he's big, powerful center. Same, same thing. He's got some nasty to him, too. OL69 here, and then you've got Antonio Pierce. 13th overall selection. A lot of chatter about what they're doing at quarterback. What's up, <laughs> Antonio? Hello, sir. A lot of chatter. Wave again if you're going to take a quarterback. Oh, no, no, see? No. No. Yeah, I lost it. Good try, though. Uh, you know, he, I'm anxious to see what Van Pran runs here. Because I thought he, his hands buy him some time with for his feet, so... You know, the foot quickness is just okay, but then he's so strong with his hands, he's able to get him, work himself around into position. But strong, strong dude. 
Okay. This is the final 40 of the uh, first run through. And it's another Penn State Nittany Lion to show off a little height, weight, and speed, <laughs> right? Caden Wallace. We've seen a few fast Penn Staters, not just this year, but over many years. to the top come back second run begin has a good first run for Jarrett Kingston and he'll stick with it play a lot of different positions here's Brady Latham for those that are curious we do have another Latham CJ Latham I don't know if he's gonna do field work I know he didn't run the 40 for Five. JC Latham I should say right five three two is the time again, Matt Lee from the U. And he improves. Nice. Again, all trying to go for Roger Rosengarten's 492 unofficial KT Leviston. Betters his time. I don't see the big guys looking up for the times as much as the little guys when they get <laughs> thrust the finish line. Oh, Crum did it though, didn't he? Yes, he did. I think he knew he ran really fast. Christian so Mahogany. Check that out. Nice. Oh, he's moving. Would you call those times solid? <laughs> nice, nice. All right. We're getting. We're, it's it's getting late early. Yeah. <laughs> Ian Rappaport, what do you have? Rich, I want to take a look at some of the prospects here at the Combine that really raised their stock. And it's hard to imagine anyone raised their stock more than Xavier Worthy, the University of Texas receiver who let this thing on fire a couple days ago or whenever was that. Yesterday, they all, all these days seem the same. 4.21 40-yard dash. Thought there was a pretty decent chance maybe that he would uh, slip into the first round, kind of late in the first round before the run. Now I'd say there's a really good chance he gets in the first round, potentially even the fourth receiver taken. J.J. McCarthy, the Michigan quarterback. Everyone loves the intangibles, loves the leadership, loves the winning, as I know you do. Wondered kind of what could he do? How could he throw it? I would say there's a pretty good chance that he is the fourth quarterback taken a lot closer to the top three than maybe we all imagined. Jalen Wright, the uh, University of Tennessee running back. Another blazing time. This one, 4-3-8. It's a really solid group of running backs. He is firmly in the mix there. And then Quinion Mitchell with his fourth. 3340. I would say solidified himself as one of the top corners. Had a great, great senior bowl. Just kind of needed to follow up with some good drills in a 40. Did exactly that here in Indianapolis. All right. So working out in uh, in Indianapolis does prove out for those who need to have some boxes checked, it appears. Happens every year. And I feel like this year, really across the board, all positions, that it's there's not a lot of consensus. So, you know, there's there's uh, positions to, to be fought for here in terms of when these guys come off the board. Any chance J.J. McCarthy cracks the top three? Oh, I mean, it's always in a chance. Terms yeah, of I mean, yeah, if we're going to say, you know, we look at the quarterback needy teams, we assume it's going to go quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. I mean, I, yeah, I think he's he's in the conversation there. Then who, which, which guy do you I mean, think he leaves from? Well, I mean, you it, talk if you talk to 10 people here and you do the Drake, May, Jaden Daniels, and this is individuals, not teams, sure. when you're talking to them. Right. You get five of one, and five will have the Is other. Is that guy. right? So now JJ gets, you know, he gets tossed up in there in that conversation, and see where he, where it sorts out. But I know one thing: I had JJ going eight to Atlanta, and I think people were kind of shocked by that. And it took me aback because when you talk to people around here, I don't know that anybody anticipates he's going to be there in the second round. Everybody anticipates JJ McCarthy's going in the first round. Here he goes. Oh, he pulled. Oh, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Man. Let's hope we got cramps. Hmm. Yeah, that's, all. that's the thing you just don't want to see here. Any chance they stop running 40s for the big men? But just like let him open up, get, get the that 10, 10 out there and cruise. Yeah, right. 
higher offer 10 and cruise. I mean, I'm I think the 10 is the most important number you're going to get. I'd be I'd be fine with that. I think most of, most of people would be. So I mean, it's fun selfishly up here to watch these big guys run this thing all the way through. But in terms of an evaluation standpoint and risk uh, minimizing risk, you could make that you could make that case. A nice round of applause from Mims here. Kudos to that uh, trainer for being able to get him up by yeah. himself with just yeah. one. No kidding. I'm glad that Mims was able to help, I guess. But there he goes. Hopefully, we'll learn a little bit more. And just why I just brought up. I'm like, you get, get the 10, throttle We're down good. by the 20, and you're done. Charles, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's a great idea, <laughs> truthfully, because I feel like, didn't we go through about a rash of this, Rich and DJ, about four or five years ago? Where about every third offensive lineman had a hamstring that one year, run into 40. I think it's a great idea to, because to me, it's all about the 10, the 20, because it's the reaction time, getting off the ball, and especially with these pass rushers coming at them. And real quick on the quarterback conversation, look, J.J. McCarthy's going to go higher than what people may have projected. But the, that number two pick with Dan Quinn now as the head coach at Washington, I feel like Jaden Daniels is more in play there than ever because defensive coaches hate quarterbacks who can run the ball like Jaden Daniels. Yeah, and it's not, and obviously you can spin it too. No, yeah, can, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, obviously that part, but what yeah. I'm saying is it's those defensive coordinators, if you ask them, the one that scares them, <laughs> Dan Quinn's going to tell you, not that Drake May can't run, but Jaden Daniels is as close to Lamar Jackson coming out this year as we've seen in, in, in that time frame. And that's what defense coordinators go crazy about. Here comes Jordan Morgan. And, and yes, Morgan was indeed a captain. <laughs> nice. Pointing that out. Sean? Hey, Rich. Sean, I'm down with the let's trim the 40 yard dash here. Taylor and I both kind of nodded in agreement when okay. you brought it up. Hey, 20 yards is more than enough. Um, you guys mentioned a couple days ago, somebody had like a warm up bracelet or it looked like a yeah, yeah. sheet. Yeah. Um, so I found there was one over here on the ground and one of the old linemen dropped it and I found it, picked it up. And just so you guys know, o -line, this is the O-line warm up sheet. That they had. Nice. <laughs> right. that, that's what that's what O'Lyman are Think thinking fast, about with this forty right here. That's nice. how you properly warm up. We sure were. That looks a little light on the buttered toast. To be honest. Yeah, I mean you got to be carb conscious, but uh, you know you hope Mims is okay. The, this the sad thing for a guy like Mims is like now he can't do the drills because yeah. he's tweaked the hammy. Taylor, what's the solution for this? What are we gonna do? I think you bring it down to a twenty yard dash. Let the guys do their 20, have fun with it, look at the 10-yard split, which is the most important thing, and then make sure everyone get to the get to the drills. Thank you, sir. Get to the drills. Yeah, if you can't block a guy in the first 10, you're probably not going to get him in the next 30. But hey, the 40s re recommenced. Pooney. A lot better. 5-3-6. And we are back live. And that's Rame, I think, isn't it? And then we just saw Rame run, and now he's receiving medical attention around the 40 yard line from Oklahoma. And I, I think we're just seeing, what, an end of the day, long days, a lot of yeah. these. They did, you know, and they do their drills before they run. Right. So they the, get everybody out here. The so. jumps and things of that nature. So they've done that first. And then you also, you're coming off of a couple of days with all the meetings where sometimes these big guys get dehydrated. Um, you just, you, you're not getting enough fluids in you. Stacy. Yeah, obviously this is uh, concerning. Uh, I just spoke with uh, Georgia tackle Amarius Mims, who told me he is dealing with a right hamstring injury. He said he felt it right at the end of that last 40. He doesn't know how severe it is. Now, interestingly, I said, are you done? He said he doesn't want to be. He wants to keep going. Uh, but now we've just seen Prince Pines from Tulane, the guard, go back into medical treatment. He was actually helped uh, off by not only the medical staff who've done an incredible job this week, 
uh, but helped off by Stanford's Walter Rouse, who wants to be a doctor, and so went directly over to assist his brother, uh, Prince Pines, and obviously now we have another uh, injury, guys, that I'm about to follow up on, but let's, let's hope this trend stops. Kingsley Suamataia of BYU. Makes it through with an improved time. Good times. Oh, Roger Rosengarten decided to just stick with it. I can understand that. <laughs> you know, you're comping him with Penny Sewell, huh? That's a nice comp. Well, no, I mean, this is this is his cousin. So, I mean, as players, I think Penny Sewell is on a is on another level. But the numbers, when you spit them out, right. it's just great when you're when you've got your cousin, you have the very identical numbers. So, you know, Penny obviously is premier, premier player in this league. Nathan Thomas. Kingsley's going to keep developing and, and, and work towards uh, getting his way on that path. But remember he'll the, enter a little bit lower. Remember the con conversation was what are the Bengals going to do? Get Burrow a receiver or get Burrow protection? And they got him a receiver, and it turned out to be Jamar Chase. Went and to it, the Super Bowl pretty yeah, quickly. Right. Yeah, soon thereafter. It, it's just a, I, I just bringing that up just because of, you know, the Sewell conversation. And then, of course, Sewell was there for the Lions to take in the next pick. Oh, or a pick later. And... Um, just amazing how the draft works out sometimes, right? No doubt. And the Sewell numbers, we just saw them up on the screen there. When you look mm -hmm. at his numbers side by side with Fuaga, who we saw in the first group, are almost identical. And I think you'll see Fuaga go in that same range where Sewell went. Well, that's right around where the Chargers choose, the Giants at six. I mean, the Titans have a lot of needs. They, and the offensive line would be right at the top of the list. All right, so here's the final 40 of the offensive line group, and thus the 2024 NFL scouting combine. Tennessee Titans last year, Rich, were tied for 28th in sacks. They were 27th in points per game. They were 28th in third down. Offensive line would sure help some of that. And as we're seeing... Help is on the way if you need it. And when Bill Callahan's your offensive line coach and his son's the head coach, he might have a little pull to be able to get that uh, position. <laughs> That's a good point, man. Uh, addressed. All right, so an improved upon 40 time is the final 40 time. Well done, Caden Wallace.